All right, guys, this again is Michael from GPRisers.com, and today we are excited to finally get these 6600s put onto our 12 card frame right here and get to mining. In the video before this, I kind of went over uh, the different cards that we have here, um, where I'm going to put them and everything like that. In this video, I am just going to kind of talk about it while assembling it um, and putting all these risers on and everything like that. I do need to get all the power cables put into the power supply, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now and we will be right back okay guys we are back here got the pile of risers over there um, real quick I wanted to show you guys how I'm powering this I did go over this in the other video but just in case you didn't see that video uh, we have a single eight pin uh, from the power supply branched off to two eight pins right here uh, both of those are connected to our 18 AWG splitters where we have the two pin tab pulled out so we have a total of four six pins right here to power four risers. So I kind of wanted to go a little bit more in depth on how to properly power a riser board. And I'm gonna go through that because, um, you know, we have a viewer ask this question a couple times on different videos. I hope that he's watching this video today. And also we're going to make a dedicated video on this topic as well on how to properly power a riser. But for today's video, I will be going over uh, just very briefly uh, the, the concept of this. A GPU riser essentially uh, is an extension cord for a graphics card to come off of your motherboard. Now, most motherboards only have a one to two PCIe slots. Some of the higher end ones have three, but a lot of them have the one X slots on them for Wi-Fi cards, sound cards, um, NVMe drives, stuff like that. But you're able to utilize those one X slots uh, and turn them into a 16 X slot. So you're able to put a full graphics card onto it. Now, in order to do that, you have to actually power uh, these risers. It's not able to pull enough draw from it because it's not originally a 16 x slot from your motherboard and your motherboard's not pulling power like that so because it's a 1x slot you have to power these boards for them to function properly and to do that on our boards we feature two six pins one is right here and one is in the back right there Additionally, we also have a Molex connection on the side here. Molex connections are good for up to 54 watts, um, which we did a little bit of testing on with 3090s, and 3090s actually pull 54 watts, so you have to be careful when using Molex sometimes. Besides that, uh, the safest way is always going to be powering these via 6-pin. And a question that we received often is, do we need to you know, power all of these? Do we need to power the two 6-pins for it to work? And the answer is no. You only need to power one of these three connections. So, since all the riser boards will be sitting on the frame like so, uh, six on each row here, uh, you need to have a USB cable connected right here to our 3.0 USB port. And so what I normally do is I plug it into the motherboard first. Um, you wanna make sure it's secure after everything is all said and done. But with this specific motherboard, as you can see right here, um, these have no 1X slots, so it's just a USB. On a regular motherboard, you will have to utilize the 1X chip that does come with our risers and plug that into the 1X slot. It also can plug into 16X slots. But for the sake of this video, I will just plug this into the first USB right over here. So now that that is plugged in right there and pretty tight in there, um, you have this USB cable come out right here and this is where you will be plugging in your 16x riser board so once it's plugged in there you should be good to go uh, besides the power of course um, when you first plug these in i do want to mention it will be a little bit tight and you want that to be tight in there so that these connections do not become loose so that said we are going to leave this riser board over here this will be where the uh, first card is going and that is going to be this xfx so as I've said before, we have a 16X slot right there. Um, and also on a GPU, we have a 16X slot. So we're just going to simply plug that 16X slot in here. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that butterfly clip that we put on our risers clips up into the GPU so that you know it's fastened in there and secure. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. I need two hands, so I'll be right back. And there you have it. It is in there, um, the 16 X butterfly clip as you can see right there is upwards meaning that this thing is locked in so now I need to plug 
our uh, one of our six pins here on the splitter cables into the riser. Now I am going to utilize actually the back six pin right here. Uh, I'm going to take the card off for a second to plug it in. Normally I would plug these in first, then put the graphics card on. But again, uh, because this, that one person who commented, I wanted to touch on this and make sure it was answered thoroughly for them. So let me go ahead and do that now. Okay, we are back. You can see the six pin right there from our splitter cable is connected securely to the six pin on the back of the riser board. So this riser is good to go. We have the card screwed in right here. We have our eight pin that needs to be powered, but I am gonna go ahead and set up the other three risers um, just so that we have a single strand coming, uh, powering four risers. I'm gonna do four cards, four risers, make sure it boots up and everything like that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and I'll be right back. All right, so we have the four 6600s on here. They are all mining. I believe they're getting 28.8 mega hash per card. The software shows 50 something mega hash, but um, I won't really exactly know how much this is pulling until I get all of the cards on. And then we can kind of take off about 60 watts for system idle and then we'll figure out on average what these cards are doing. So that said, uh, we got four of these on. Um, all of the risers are powered by one eight pin. I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of the cards all put together, uh, make sure it's running in minor stat and everything like that. And then I'll update you guys with the stats and everything. And then we'll move this rig probably right down there under uh, the two 6600s right there, or I'm sorry, the two 6600 XT rigs. Um, so we'll throw it down there next to the 3070 Ti's. And again, I'll update you guys. We can look at the PDU, uh, see the wattage that it's pulling uh, beforehand, and then we'll look at it after, and then we can easily calculate overall what this rig is pulling. That said, let me go ahead and get all these other risers on, all these other cards, and we will be right back. All right, guys, we have all 12 cards up and going. Check out that blue light on these Hellhounds. It is a nice touch. I'm not sure if I would like it on a personal computer as the color is uh, quite unique to the card. I am sure that you probably could unplug uh, one of these headers, which would take the LEDs out, but that's a whole lot of effort. Um, everything on this is up and running. Um, what I will do before we go into the actual electricity pull on this, and I wanted to let this run for about 10, 15 minutes uh, before we did the electrical test. Uh, that's just because of fluctuations with the miner, fluctuations with different things. There are other miners hooked up to this PDU. If you check the PDU out right here, we do have a a warning light on it. As it gets higher and higher in wattage, that does eventually switch to an overload light. Um, these PDUs are rated uh, 30 amps, 240 volt. So they can handle up to 5,700 watts continuous, but once you get above 4,000 watts, it seems like they start giving you a warning there. Um, I was nervous at first with it because we did have uh, the even the overload light come on one of those PDUs over there once we were um, hooking up the 3070 Ti rig to it. Uh, however, I am just going to go ahead and watch the cables, uh, make sure none of them are getting warm or anything like that, and just keep an eye out on it because I know that these can handle 5700 continuous. That said, uh, right here, I am going to post a couple screenshots on the screen right here. Um, here you can see the total hash rate. Um, I didn't write it down, uh, but you should be able to see it here. And um, additionally, we'll switch over to the overclocks that we have on this rig. Now you can see um, the overall uh, uh, you know, 12 car performance that we have here. However, I'll switch and let you guys see the minor stat um, uh, settings that I did mimic on minor stat OS. Now with the minor stat settings, they have the numbers laid out real nice here for you guys. Um, this is exactly what I put onto my rigs when I first do a rig build. Uh, some, you know, cards can handle more than others. Some can not handle as much as others. Um, but this is always a great starting point that I kind of gravitate towards. And then when I do have more time and after a while of stability, I do start tweaking a little bit. But enough of that. Let's go ahead and pull the number off this PDU right here. So as you can see here, we are pulling 4.69 kilowatts. So that's about 4,700 watts. Let's go ahead and write that down. So this is not going to be an exact amount, but we have uh, 4,690 being pulled from the PDU. Uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn off this rig and see 
what that number turns into. Uh, we do have to take into account about, I wanna say three to four watts per fan that we have on the back. So that's about 30, uh, I would say about 30 watts uh, would be a good estimate uh, for the total, you know, the 120 millimeter fans. And system idle is usually right at 60 watts on these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to write down the number that the PDU shows when turning this rig off. And then we'll know what the total rig pull of this rig is. And then we can go ahead and subtract out the fans and system idle. And then we'll be able to divide that number by 12 and figure out what these cards are pulling. So that said, let's go ahead to the PDU over here. You can still see the light is on. 4.72 now, okay, 4.71. So let's go ahead and just average that out, I guess. Now that is probably honestly fluctuating because of the uh, LHR unlocks that are occurring on the NVIDIA rig that's down there. So let's just do uh, 4,700 even and we'll go ahead and shut this rig off. So we are now at 3,740 watts. So that is 960 watts that this total rig is pulling. So if we back out the 90 watts for the system idle and the fans, we're sitting at 850 watts. And that is for 12 of these 6,600 non-XTs. So 850 watts divided by 12, that is going to be 71 watts per card which is actually exactly the same um, as the 6600 XTs. So it looks like that these 6600s are just um, less efficient 6600 XTs. And that's by about four mega hash because the 6600 XTs get right around 32 and a half. These are getting right around 28 and a half. And four mega hash difference might not sound like a whole lot, but these numbers are already pretty low for mining cards, which means if it's four mega hash compared to the 32 and a half and the 38 and a half, that means that these cards are right around 12% less efficient than the 6600 XTs. When they're consuming the same wattage and producing less mega hash, it just means that they are going to be less efficient. So when I first started making this video on the uh, yesterday, I really thought we were gonna be able to pull better efficiency numbers out of these cards, uh, but you know we are unable to do so right now, which is honestly kind of a letdown. Um, they are cheaper than the 6600 XTs, but you know, although we are paying commercial electric now, we are you know, very uh, sensitive to efficiency. We want things to be as efficient as possible. And a 12% difference in efficiency, uh, for example, is, is more of a difference than the efficiency between a 6600 XT and an RTX 3090. And efficiency, if you guys are just you know, wondering how I'm measuring that, it's just mega hash per watt. Long story short, um, that is kind of a letdown again, but that's okay. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be trying to get as many of these as I was. Uh, I kind of rushed to get 12 of them to be able to make a full rig out of it. Uh, but I think I'm going to go ahead and stick with the RX 6600 XTs. But this was a good experience building this. I am going to keep it. I'm going to keep it mining. Um, you never know really what algorithms these things might be good on later on. And they're not so inefficient to the point where you know it's a problem. So let's just do some math here real quick. I'm not gonna go too in depth on it. Um, 28 and a half, let's just double that. Uh, that's 57, which is pretty much what a um, RTX 3070 Ti is. However, an RTX 3070 Ti consumes about 180 to 195 watts. Uh, whereas these cards consume, like we said, 71 watts. Um, so this is really only 142 watts for the same mega hash that an RTX 3070 Ti is pumping out at 180 to 195 watts. So these are still more efficient than an RTX 3070 Ti, of which I have a six card rig here of those and I have two of them right there. So they are not at all on the bottom end of efficiency when it comes to modern graphics cards for mining Ethereum but they're just not up to par as some of the others. So I'm gonna cut it here, guys. Um, I hope that this video was helpful in choosing whether or not you, know, you might want to explore uh, getting a couple of these for mining, whether it, it leaned you towards it, whether it leaned you away from it. But yeah, drop a comment down below. You know, what, what do you guys think with these 6600 XTs? Are you guys going to 
you know, try to get some more of them if you, if you already have a couple, or are you going to go ahead and skip it completely, focus on the 6600 XTs, or are you gonna go more so NVIDIA? Um, you know, really, uh, what, what are you guys mining with right now? What are you guys looking to mine with? But we'd love to hear what you guys have to say. That said, I hope everyone watching this has a great rest of their day, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.